Sector Minister Cecilia Dapahu made this known when she took her turn at the Meet the Press series in Accra, challenged private businesses to invest in the sector. Also tonight, experts are to include an anti-dumping policy in the African Free Trade Agreement to check needless imports in the various economies on the continent. Lead coordinator of the Africa Policy Trade Center at the United Nations Economic Commission for Africa, David Luke, made this known at the ongoing Africa International Conference on Trade in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. Right, so uh, let's uh, take uh, the some international news, what's coming up on the international front. Right, I, 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 we're not able to bring you the, uh, what's happening on the international front. Yes, uh, Sri Lanka. Islamic State has claimed responsibility for the Easter Sunday church and hotel bombings in Sri Lanka that killed at least 321 people and wounded more than 500. Sri Lanka uh, marks first mass funeral and a day of mourning for the victims of Sunday's bomb blast. Officials said the coordinated attacks on churches and hotels were believed to be retaliation for attacks on mosques in New Zealand. Right, so those were our major news highlights. Up next is the big one. Now, remember, we're streaming live on Facebook, and you can hear us on 3FM 92.7, as well as on our uh, live stream at 3news.com. Let's start with our very first story tonight. The Nigerian community in Ghana has pledged to support the Ghana Police Service to flush out Nigerian miscreants and criminals. The group also vowed to point out suspected criminals in a bid to maintain the good neighborliness uh, relationship between the two countries. Here's a report by Peter Kuo Adato. The involvement of some foreign nationals in criminal activities in Ghana appear to have increased. Just last week, the police in Accra rescued a high-profile Lebanese national suspected to have been kidnapped by some Nigerians now at large. At least two Nigerians have so far been arrested in connection with the kidnappings. Thus, the Nigerian community in Ghana insists cannot be allowed to continue. Watching news, the next thing that goes through my mind is Nigeria suspect, Nigeria suspect. It's uncalled for. Sir, we are not bad people. We are go-getter. We can turn not into something, genuinely. I came to this country, nobody. I was nobody. By the grace of God and God of this country, Ghana, I'm somebody today. Even back in my country, I'm somebody through this land. And we will not allow anybody to destroy it or to tarnish the safety, the peace we're enjoying this life. We do everything possible. Business and project advisor to Nigerian Business Forum, Oluye Yemi Fatui, pledged their readiness to support the police to fight crime. We are not police, but we can gather information within our communities and give it to you. We will point at them when the time arises. When we have to take you to Nigeria, to their parents back home in Nigeria, we will do that. We will name and shame them. At least we too can have rest. Nigerians contribute a lot, a lot to the economy of Ghana. And then when we have few miscreants, few deviants, you know, who come up from time to time to commit crimes, we want to ensure that we as a community denounce it and we reject it and we make sure that whatever we can do within our powers, you know, to assist in ensuring that Nigerians are law abiding, they obey the laws of Ghana. Ghana is a very good place for all of us. The acting Accra Regional Police Commander, DCOP Kweku Buedu Pepa, welcomed the move. We know that it is not all uh, Nigerians who are bad. The same thing applicable to Ghanaians here. We have bad notes and then the good notes. What I can say is that I advise your people very, very well. Because what we have noticed is that one person will just come and then rent an accommodation. Within a matter of Two weeks, three weeks, the, the house is full of 
Nigerians, about 40, 50. So the movement of Nigerians into Ghana, you have, we have to do something about it. DCOP Kweku Buedu Prepra said the police has stepped up efforts in tracking down those behind the Lebanese kidnapping. Right, so I'm privileged uh, to have in the studio with me tonight uh, security analyst and executive director of the Jetike uh, Center for Human Security, Sani Adib, joining us. Um, Sani how are you, sir? Very Thank well. you uh, for coming. I, I, I mean, when I heard the Nigerian group uh, make this offer, uh, I kept wondering, is this an offer uh, which is worth it? Well, indeed, it is worth it, especially taking into consideration how complex and uh, crime has become lately because of new issues, new actors, new weapons, new strategies. It has become transnational. Mm. Okay, so we have mm. a quite a, a large Nigerian community in Ghana with unconfirmed figures putting it at well over two million. And it's gone beyond Nigerians coming into the country to transact business and go back. We have Nigerians who have moved bag and baggage into Ghana and they are staying here for and good. They've and they invested. They and have they've intermarried invested. and like they have children who are Ghanaians. And I've always been quite categorical about uh, the fact that we have second and third generation, generation. Nigerians. And I've even playfully sometimes say that don't be surprised in the next two decades or three, we might have a, a president of Ghana with Nigerian Heritage. descent. Mm. So indeed, um, I think what is happening is quite worrying, mm. but there's the need for deepening partnership between the security agencies. So when, you, when you say what's happening is quite worrying, are you referring to the crime rate and the continuous involvement of Nigerians? Indeed. I mean, which kind of creates a bad image for the good ones who are here, though. Indeed. Um, mentioning Nigeria is something that doesn't really sound palatable palatable to Globally. the ears mm. of many people around the world, even in Ghana. Uh, sometimes if you go to transact, I have a lot of Nigerian mm. friends, and they have lamented over the fact that when they go to transact business, in many cases, with that Nigerian accent, uh, people are quite worried yeah. dealing with them yeah. and that is worrying and I don't also hook line and sinker blame the ordinary Ghanaian because we have a litany of cases before the police involving Nigerians uh, uh, perpetrating crimes from robbery to even kidnapping and let me say without missing words that Kidnapping, uh, you know the spate of kidnapping in the country um, is something new though kidnapping as in th that crime is nothing you know, new in Ghana, but with the spate, with the audacious nature mm -hmm. with which it is uh, perpetrated is something new. You can imagine uh, you know, just kidnapping uh, an ambassador uh, of a foreign country into Ghana. This is something that you might not have uh, Ghanaians uh, audacious Involved enough to perpetrate. Previously. So, uh, previously, mm -hmm. but now you have uh, quite a large number of Nigerians coming in and impacting their criminal knowledge to Ghanaians, and it is not particularly uh, surprising. And so there is the need for the security agencies to be up and doing, and it is only possible when there is deepening partnership between the security agencies and the Nigerian uh, uh, community in Ghana, because they are their people. They know them better than we do. Let's look at the issue of uh, trans-border uh, crimes and focus on uh, ECOWAS a little bit. I mean, I know that there have been quite a series of protocols on sharing of intelligence yeah. uh, between ECOWAS member states and it doesn't look like uh, member nations are doing this openly. I don't know the, whether there are any uh, secret or uh, agreements that are being implemented but do you get the sense that uh, as an institution ECOWAS uh, we're not taking the 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 cross-border crime, sure. tackling it, we're not taking it serious and for that matter we're not sharing intelligence enough? Well, recently I conducted a research uh, pertinent to this topic that is uh, coming up, security partnership amongst ECOWAS member states. Mm -hmm. Indeed, uh, when you take a closer look at the protocol establishing ECOWAS, the Lagos Treaty of uh, 1975, it was business-like. There was nothing security in it. But the security bit started coming with the non-aggression pact, then the Liberian conflict started, and we had the creation of ECOMOC. But since then, we've had a myriad of 
different protocols uh, governing security from transnational crime to cyber crime to uh, uh, anti-money laundering to even terrorism. But the pro there is a problem, okay? Most of these protocols are not binding. And because of local political dynamics, you know, because you might go to the sub-regional level and agree on a protocol that is good for the sub-region, but might not be necessarily good for your country. You think, that we are, to we, you think that we're engaging in protocols that are not beneficial to us and we're not doing it properly, for which we're getting a lot of uh, trans uh, cause uh, criminals see, coming sometimes, in. Sometimes the uh, protocols might be uh, 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 beneficial to one country, but, but the detrimental other. to another. And when they come, they are supposed to, in most of the cases, have parliament ratify it, okay? But in many cases, it doesn't always happen. So the commitment on the part of ECOWAS member states to abide by and implement to the latter most of these protocols agreed at the sub-regional level is extremely key, especially mm. taking into consideration, like I said, uh, how uh, uh, lethal, you know, uh, crime has become the issue of terrorism with terrorist organizations such as the Al Qaeda in the Islamic Maghreb, Ansar Din and Sh and Ansar Sharia Al Mubarabitum, with their leaders such as such as Mukhtar Bel Mukhtar calling on their followers to stage attacks against Western targets mm -hmm. and their collaborators in Sub-Saharan Africa. And it has happened at the Radisson Hotel in Mali, mm -hmm. uh, the Hotel Splendid, which I have ever been to in Burkina Faso, Grand Bassam in Ivory Coast. So it is coming closer and closer to us by the day and, and we you, cannot you afford to let that we should begin down. to uh, consider a standby force, for example, an echo standby force to be able to deal with uh, cross-border crimes within well, well, there's, uh, member states. there's something like, like that, that under the, 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 the current ECOWAS regime. Even at the AU level, we have the uh, AU uh, uh, Council for Peace and Security. Uh, mm. and there's a standby force of, the, uh, of that nature that follows up to the individual countries to make sure that what they agree with at the regional and sub-regional level is implemented to the latter. But like I indicated, the commitment on the part of these member states is extremely key because crime <laughs> has become global, it's become international, it's become transnational. And because of the tightly niche, uh, n I mean, knit nature of our societies in especially sub-Saharan Africa, there's always a possibility of uh, trans-border criminal activities mm. like we have in Nigeria with Boko Haram in the northeastern part, and they are always able to cross the border into Cameroon to stage their attacks. Indeed, currently there are issues in Burkina Faso, issues of terrorism, and on a um, monthly basis, the counter-terrorism center, they sent me the figures, uh, they just sent me that for last month, and the numbers is staggering. So Stop. by the day, it's coming closer and closer to us, and there's the need for us to get the security agencies to do what they are supposed to do, right. and to get us also, ad, as the ordinary citizens, to do what we're supposed to do. Because, Stephen, Generally, Ghanaians, we are not very conscious of our security environment. Which is very bad. Sometimes you see awkward movements, suspicious activities in our neighborhoods, but we always feel do you fear them? It is not your and business. Sometimes we, and sometimes we volunteer information e freely, exactly. really. When and when but you but go but to mm. the, the mall and other public places, which are usually soft targets for terrorists uh, and which are also frequented by Westerners, are you subjected to any form of security check, at least metal detector mm. checks? Absolutely not. not because we have a reason to believe in Ghana that we don't have any insurgency in any part of the country. No, we peaceful, have not been attacked hospitable. by terrorists mm -hmm. before. And uh, Ghana is generally peaceful, but we're forgetting about the fact that we have signed a defense cooperation agreement with the U.S., mm -hmm. and that obviously puts us in right, the line uh, of Zadiba, time. Zadiba, let me, let me wrap up uh, on this and uh, narrow back on the Nigerian issue uh, shortly. Uh, do you get the sense that... Uh, they, they, they're feeling, the Nigerians, legitimate Nigerians are feeling stigmatized due to Ghanaian attitudes uh, towards them for which we must also begin to seek to change. Obviously, um, they, they feel stigmatized not only those in Ghana, but even Nigerians in Nigeria, mm. because I've sat for courses with quite a number of Nigerians at the Kofi Annan International and Peacekeeping. Alone, and uh, and they, 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 problematic they, 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 there's a reason to be worried even not very long ago, we had demonstrations in Nigeria 
at the Ghanaian uh, uh, consulate Concept. there over uh, concerns, concern, I mean, uh, issues relating to yeah. the attacks retail. on businesses, yeah, retail businesses, businesses etc. So we, we, I think th we, we have to be very there careful be because there's the need to on this to review attitudes and everything. Right? Exactly, right. because right. they can retaliate they in can. so many ways and we wouldn't want it to get so to that extent. Right, um, Sadi, thank you very much yes. uh, for your mm -hmm. time. Sunny Adib is Executive Director of the Jatike uh, Center for Human Security. Let's still stay here a little bit. They accused by in the uh, recent Achimoto kidnapping case has been jailed for 36 years. The convict Isaac Aibona uh, pleaded guilty in four counts of conspiracy to commit crime, robbery, causing harm and kidnapping. Isaac Aibona was convicted on his own plea. The trial judge sentenced him to 20 years for robbery and eight years each for causing harm and kidnapping. Sentencing for the charge of conspiracy was deferred pending the arrest of his accomplices. However, the convict is back in court facing murder charges at the Jabing Magistrate Court 2 following the death of one of his victims. Trial has been adjourned to April 30, 2019. An Accra Regional Police Patrol on April 2 rescued an elderly woman who was kidnapped by Isaac Aigbona and his gang at Achimota Mile 7. The other members of the gang, however, managed to escape. So uh, this is still News at 10 live from the News Hub at Adisawikanda. You can also hear me on 3FM 92.7. We'll be right back. Please stay. Welcome back. Now, unionized staff at the Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority and members of the Maritime Dock Workers Union have embarked on a protest calling for a review of the Tema Port Expansion Concession Agreement with the Meridian Port Services. They uh, contend that about uh, 1,200 workers will be laid off when the Meridian Port Services commences operation. There is an easy calm at both ports, Tema and Takradi ports. Aggrieved workers won red to push home their concern. For one week, members of the Maritime Dock Workers Union have served notice to wear red and hoist red flags. We want to indicate to government our happiness about the Meridian Port Service, the port expansion uh, project, uh, the construction of the Terminal 3. Um, this, this thing is not new. Uh, if we could remember, uh, when this present government was in opposition, the, the, there was a full uh, campaign, even in parliament, you know, that the concession in terms of the the tax the tax waiver, uh, which amounted to about eight hundred thirty-two million dollars for an investment at that time, which was thought to be one point five billion dollars, was too much. But even today, the revaluation indicates that the the, the investment. The investment is about $1.1 $1 .1 billion. So some, if a company invests $1.1 $1 .1 billion and, and gets a tax waiver of about $832 million, then virtually it's Ghana that is constructing. According to the General Secretary of the Maritime Dock Workers Union, it is a bad deal which will need to be reviewed because the authority would lose revenue. The bigger issue is the fact that um, there, there had been exclusivity rights um, guaranteed within the concession agreement that what they are doing um, no company can do so can do the same business and it is also going to take away a lot of container business from gpha and on the chain too there are terminal operators like tct there are steve dog companies there are labor companies like ghana dog labor company they are all going to lose their jobs government is yet to issue a white paper on recommendations by the Inter-Ministerial Review Committee set up in December last year to access proposals submitted by GPHA on the 35-year-old concession agreement. Deputy Transport Minister Thytos Nikwate Glover promised that government will revisit the deal. I want to appeal to workers of GPHA that we are not sleeping on this matter. It is receiving the urgent attention of the government and will do everything possible to make sure that we are able to deal with this problem. Let us not go back to put the law into our own hands. 
to destroy or to harm anybody. GPJ is under my ministry. I will not sit down for GPJ to collapse. And that's how we wrap up with News at 10. Thank you very much for making time. On behalf of the crew, good night. There is more news on 3news.com. Thanks for your time.